So the first letter I like to begin with is A. In the initial position, we write this with an elif, with a symbol of med on top of it. So if we want to write the word ach, how do you think we would do it? It would be written like so. In the medial position, however, we don't put any symbol on top of the elif, we just leave it alone. If we want to write the word jan, we can then write it jan. We don't connect the elif and the nun. In the final position, if we are writing uh, elif, we just write it as such. And we can see this in the word baba, where it is not connected uh, afterward. And in the word arach, we can see that elif is in its isolated form. So we would write arach as And this is because the re is not connecting to the elif, which does not connect to chim. This is one of the more intuitive vowels. Now the vowels that we are going to cover next will have a little bit more complexity to them. Let's cover e for now. So in the initial position, when we're using the ustun, we will actually write an elif first, and then we will place the ustun on top. And we can see this in the word ish. represented as such. This is ish. So if we have the word it, how do you think we'd represent this? Simple. It. In the medial position, we simply place the ustun on top of any, any letter. So if we have the word ban, how do you think we would write this? simple. In the final position, we write it using the letter he, with the ustun preceding it. And again, this is pretty simple. If we want to write the word ne, we simply write ne. And in the isolated position, same idea, we write the ustun, but this time we simply write he in the isolated form. And you can see this in the word Dede. So this concept should not be too complicated, but one thing I need to mention is that we typically don't write the ustun in daily texts. This is usually reserved for beginner purposes and is not commonly seen in mainline or mainstream Ottoman Turkish texts. So the unmarked version is simply initiated with an elif in the initial position, which I'm marking with the IN over here. In the medial position, we don't write anything. In the final position, we simply write HE. And in the isolated position, we also simply write the isolated version of HE. So how does this look? Well, ish would look like this. It would look like this. Ban. written like this, ne, as such, and dede, likewise. Now it's worth exploring how to write the letter he. So in the initial form, we write he using this glyph. And we can see this in the word uh, hash. So. I will write the ustun in, so this is hash, okay? In the medial form, it looks like this. And we can see this in the word mesh, okay? Mesh. These will always be read as consonants. This will always represent H in the initial and the medial form. However, when we get to the final and isolated form, this now begins to resemble the vowel. Now we come up in an interesting, uh, interesting conundrum. What do we do? How do we, how do we solve this? As we've explored in the previous section, we can simply tell this by the context. So if we want to verify that it's a vowel, then we'll simply know. If we follow these rules, I'm going to represent he in the Latin alphabet 
flanked by two vowels. The capital A can represent any vowel. In this case, we would know that he is representing a consonant. Second case, at the end of a word, here too, we would know that he is representing a consonant. But what about the third case, in which we have a consonant, again, any consonant, right before he? Here, we would know that he is representing, in fact, a vowel. Some examples we can take a look at are when we're using he to represent a vowel or when we're using it to represent a consonant. This is all purely relegated to the, ice, to the final and isolated form. The medial and initial forms are never called into question. It is just these ones. So let's take a look. If we have he at the end of this word, this is be. Again, there's a consonant, and then there's a letter here afterwards, so we know it's a vowel. Same with here. We add he, this becomes chere. And then we have, we add he over here, and this becomes also a vowel. In this case, it's the a, uh, which we will go over later, but if there's a consonant before it, you can rest assured that this will become a vowel. Some examples we can take a look at are when we're using he to represent a vowel or when we're using it to represent a consonant. This is all purely relegated to the, ice, to the final and isolated form. The medial and initial forms are never called into question. It is just these ones. So let's take a look. If we have he at the end of this word, this is be. Again, there's a consonant, and then there's a letter here afterwards, so we know it's a vowel. Same with here. We add he, this becomes chere. And then we have, we add he over here, and this becomes also a vowel. In this case, it's the a, uh, which we will go over later. But if there's a consonant before it, you can rest assured that this will become a vowel. Now, why don't we take a look at when the letter he is preceded by a vowel. So here, this would become yu. It's a vowel. It's a consonant. I'm sorry. Yu. Here, sha. This too is a consonant. And here as well, this is ti. Ti. And this is because in each of these cases, the letter he is being preceded by a vowel. So the next letters I'd like to cover are e and e. Uh, we represent them using the letter ye. And in the initial position, in order to indicate the vowel, we must first place an elif, and then we begin with the ye. So if we want to write if, right, how do you think we would write this? So we would write... Ip. Well, what about it? Same exact way. It. But in the reg in the other forms, it's quite regular. So shish is written as shish, and fuch is. And then R is R. And I hope you can understand uh, how these match up with the with the like an isolate form and then final form and medial form. Uh, it's quite regular. It's not that difficult. Um, there's one slight detour I'm going to need to make here, and that is sometimes the letter Y can be used to represent the E sound. Now this is very rare, and it is so rare that you can probably count on one hand the number of words, or maybe two hands the number of words that have this. But in order to differentiate this from the normal e, we just put a dot on top, and it appears in words like uh, demek, for example. So, demek. De 
This is demek. So the ye here is representing e. And then the second uh, e is being represented with the normal ustun. So this is just one detour I need to make. It's very rare. So please don't get too confused over it. The next letter I want to talk about is Y, the Y in the Turkish Latin alphabet. So in the initial position, we differentiate this from the vowel reading by simply writing it as such. We don't put any elif, we don't do anything fancy, it's very regular. And then the medial, final, and isolated forms are just written the same as the vowel form. Uh, it is only the initial form that has a distinction, and, and that's why I've kept it here. But in the middle and end, I don't feel the need to give you examples where it's in these sort of forms. I can just give you context examples because we, remember, we differentiate ye uh, between its vowel and consonant reading depending on the context. So some of the rules that we've covered in the past, uh, for example, if we have uh, two vowels flanking ye, and again, remember, we are reading this from uh, left to right in this instance. If we have two vowels flanking it, we can then assume that ye is representing a consonant. Similarly, if we have just one vowel before ye, we can also assume that ye is representing the consonant. But if we have a consonant before ye, we can then assume that ye is representing e or a, uh, and then very rarely a as well. So what are some examples here? Um, if you look in all these cases, in all these cases in the medial, final, and isolated form, we have uh, the vowel reading coming right after a consonant. So this is a consonant, and this is a consonant, this is a consonant, and this is a consonant. We have a consonant coming right before ye, and then that confirms our vowel reading of it. So shish, in this sequence, we have uh, she, which is a consonant, and then e, the vowel. And you'll see this. If you want, you can just pause the video and you'll, you'll see the pattern here. But so for the consonant reading, I've told you that the middle and the end positions here are not any different from these. Uh, but let me, let me give you some examples. Here, if we want to write y'all, we would simply write it as such. Y'all, we have a way of distinguishing the initial uh, form for ye and e and e. So we don't need to do anything fancy here. There's no fancy context rules needed. But in the middle position, uh, this is just so written the same exact way. So what is a what is a word? Well, how about aya? How do you think this is written? Very simply, aya, and we can tell that it's going to be a consonant because it's flanked by two vowels, and in the end. Uh, we can take a look at the word I, written as such. And this, I hope, is not too confusing for you. It's just a very simple set of context-based rules that will determine when it's read as a consonant versus a vowel. And we can always rely on these to differentiate that. I would like to now explore U, O, E, uh, and O. In the initial position, we use valve to write this. However, we must place an if before the vav in order to read this as a vowel. So how would you write uch? Simple. Uch. And what about o? This would be o. So I, I hope you can see the pattern and appreciate it. And then in the medial and final position, this is not very complicated or very sophisticated. Uh, for example, col. Col. And, or, bo. And then in the isolated form, uh, for example, ruh. So it's really um, not that complicated. 
And again, the context rules that we spoke about apply here. Before we move on to talking about the consonant reading of this, I would like to make one point. And that is that uh, e and o only appear in the first syllable. Uh, they will never appear in the second syllable. And the only exception to, th to this is the suffix yor, or a word of European uh, origin. And you can, you can plainly see this in words like dokus. You would never, at any point, ever see e or o here. This can only be o. The question of uh, vav, the reading of vav as u or as o, would only ever occur here. So this is the only place that we would ever have a toss-up, and that's just what I wanted to mention to you really quickly. Anyways, moving forward, if we want to take a look at the reading of vav as a consonant, well, in initial position, it's quite simple. We just write vav, uh, we do not write any elif, and this alone will indicate that it is a... Uh, that it's a consonant. So if we have the word, if we have this, how do you think this is supposed to be read as? Well, this would be vaj. All right. Now in the middle and end, that's a little bit trickier. And again, we just default to our context-based rules. If we have uh, vav flanked by two vowels, then we can understand that vav is going to be read as a uh, as a consonant, v or v in the English alphabet. And then similarly, if we have a vowel before vav, again we're reading from left to right here, we can similarly understand that vav is going to take the reading of a consonant. But if we have uh, a consonant coming before vav, or even two consonants flanking vav, in both cases, we'll understand that we can read vav as one of the vowels. So in this case, I will default you to, we can take a look at the word uh, vaz. And we know that this is going to be a v because it's flanked by two vowels. And in the end, The word of. Again, we know it's going to be a consonant because it's uh, preceded by a vowel. So I hope this can make sense to you. It's really not that complicated and